Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And for today's video, I thought I'd just do a kind of continuation of my repotting chat that I started the other day. I know I was waiting on some hydrogen peroxide to do some things to some roots and it still hasn't arrived, but I've got lots of other things that I need to do, so it's going to be a slightly random planty video, but I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So, in regards to my last plant chores video, I thought I would just give you a couple of updates from the last few days. So, obviously, I got my philodendron splendid on a moss pole and it was looking very wonky, but as you can see, she has kind of straightened herself out a bit and she's looking really good. She also has not had any more mealybugs. There's been absolutely no sign at all. I am, oh my goodness, you will not believe how much I'm checking this plant at the moment because it's really hard to isolate them at this time of year because this is the room that gets the best light and if I put her over that side, she'll get too much sun. So I'm just kind of having to monitor her very, very closely, but so far so good. And also quite a lot of you are asking how I keep my moss poles hydrated. As you can see, can you see? It is quite hydrated at the moment. What I tend to do is I just get my misting bottle. This is on the days that I don't water, obviously. When I do water, I will water the pole as well. But I will just kind of go around all of the all of the nodal points and just kind of spray the aerial roots. Like, so for example, just there. Like, I'll spray those areas there just to help them attach, grip on and climb up the pole. But yeah, so that's that one. And then the Scandapsis Silver Hero that I put in moss, already, I mean, it's still obviously looking quite curly, but already you can see it's starting to flatten out and look a little bit healthier, which I am so, so, so happy about. I was so concerned about this plant because obviously I went away, I came back and she was looking, she wasn't looking good and I was so scared of losing her, but this is giving me hope at the moment and I really hope she continues to do well. I have got her in my cabinet at the moment, which... To be honest, in about 20 minutes, I'll probably have to open because it's getting warm in here, guys. It's getting warm as usual. And I think my cabinet plants will not be happy. So, so yeah, that is that one. And then this one, I was gonna leave and do for a video, but this is my Philodendron Milano Chrysum, how she looks currently. I I made the executive decision to chop her up because I, I haven't had a chance to take a look at her roots yet because obviously there's not a huge amount I can do without the hydrogen peroxide that is supposedly arriving today. Maybe I'll take her out and have a look, I'm not quite sure, but I got a lovely top cutting from her. I took some other little wet stick cuttings and I put them in my prop box. So even if, even if this root a bit here isn't saveable, at least I know that, fingers crossed, I'll be able to save the rest of the plant. So yeah that is what i did there and so today i've got this little alocasia fry deck that's been in a cup for a very long time she did actually sprout another bulb a little while ago and as you can see that leaf has now turned completely yellow so i think it's definitely time for her to be potted up in a bigger pot and potentially divide this bulb kind of get a get a brand new plant going so I think I'm gonna start with that one. Let me just grab my potting mat. My potting mat for once is not full of soil. I did empty it out, which is something that I'm so bad at doing. I get so lazy with it. I'll finish filming or I'll finish repotting and I'll just fold it up and think I'll do that later. And then I never get around to it. So I did, I did empty that. There we go. So I'm not sure. I think probably the best way to get her out is actually just gonna be to cut the cup because I think her roots are probably quite contained in there and I don't want any of them to get damaged. So yeah, I'm just gonna try and break her out. Wow, yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty solid in there. I am gonna have to try and break the soil apart a little bit and divide the other little bulb. I'm also feeling very organized today. I got up really early and I filmed a Patreon video because the video that I was planning on filming for my Patreon this month for various reasons hasn't gone ahead. So I filmed and edited a Patreon video. It's now about midday and and I'm doing a YouTube video and it feels it feels great because sometimes I get on such a roll with things and I feel so good about myself and so like on top and I don't know if any of you get this but when I fall off my kind of I was gonna say fall off the wagon, fall out of my flow of things. Sometimes it can be so hard to get back into them and, oh, the little bulb just divided itself naturally. Uh, but yeah, it can be so hard to kind of find my flow again. And actually, 
a lot of the time I feel like if I'm very busy and on top of things, it's so much easier to stay on top. Whereas if like I've just gone away recently, when you go away or something takes you out of your daily flow, it can be just so difficult to find that motivation again. And that's something that I've always found. So I think obviously allowing downtime and allowing time for yourself is important. But for me anyway, I always need to kind of have a bit of structure and feel like feel like I'm getting stuff done. Okay, so some of her roots are looking just a little bit, a little bit sludgy. I mean, oh, is this another one that's going to have to be treated for root rot? I don't know. I think what I'm going to do with this plant for now is I'm just going to give them a trim back, a little trim back and hope that that does the job. And then when my hydrogen peroxide arrives, I will give her a soak through with that. They actually feel very firm when I'm cutting into them. And I'm not going to cut them too much because her root system isn't actually as big as I thought it would be. It looks like it was really kind of pushing against the cup and and it's not so yeah let's just give them a little trim so the latest drama with me here is that my humidifier is packed up which is such a nightmare my kind of like big industrial i think it's a levoit humidifier and it's absolutely amazing but i i tried to rewire the plug recently and i have a feeling that i might have done something wrong i i've never rewired a plug before and it actually worked at first but now it's it's not working at all so i think i need to i think i need to maybe try and rewire it again i don't know but anyway at the moment it's just it's the worst time of year for it to pack up because ugh, it's not only so hot the air is just so 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 dry and in this room as i've mentioned many times before it gets absolutely baking so i've been leaving bowls of water out absolutely everywhere and kind of letting it evaporate i've also been misting a lot and i know misting is not the best way to raise the humidity in general but i have actually found and this is i guess kind of like indirectly a little experiment but i have found that when i've been misting my plants and then i close the windows and doors to kind of create a contained space my humidity reader does go up so obviously as the water evaporates if it's got a contained space to not escape through although it's not going to do the same thing as a humidifier it does still it does still help so i think i think that's what i'm gonna have to just do for the time being and then hopefully get my big one working again soon because oh god the stresses of summer you wouldn't think that it would be so stressful i mean winter's usually the time when things start going wrong but it's proving quite difficult at the moment so that is that's the roots and they're really not as many as i thought i Actually, I mean, so I got this pot to pot her up in and I'm kind of thinking that might be a little bit big. I mean, I know they do spread quite quickly and she is pushing out new growth. So maybe I'll take the risk and pot her in, in this pot. Yeah, I think, I think that'll do. This little baby bulb as well that I just separated, obviously I'm gonna have to chop that leaf off, but it has got a really nice little root on it. So I think if I can get ah, a smaller pot, then I might pop this one in there and in fact it kind of needs to be even smaller there we go i've got a small little pretty one that i decorated i think i'll pop that in there and see how it gets on i love how allocations are always springing up little bulbs it's just it's so great it's like free plants some of you were asking where i get my clear pots from as well and i just get them off amazon these are actually orchid pots which Kind of means that if you've got a bit of netting or something to put at the bottom, then it's a good idea because it helps stop all the soil from falling out because their holes are quite big. I don't have any at the moment, so I'm not doing that, but it's always a good idea. The thing I love about using clear pots as well is that you can really kind of check in clearly and see how the roots are doing, almost like you're propagating. You can just watch the roots climbing down. It's a lot easier to tell when your plants are ready for a repot and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I'm really hoping that this is going to be... The right size. In fact, I might put her a little bit further down. I just wanted to say as well, thank you. Thank you so much, genuinely, to all of you that left lovely comments on my last video in regards to my granny. It's it's so sweet of you and it really, really, really means a lot. It's, yeah, it's funny. I When I started filming that video, the last one, I really, truly thought that I was in a good headspace to film and doing planty things is oh my goodness, it's the most therapeutic thing in the entire world. So I was just like, obviously that's gonna be, that's gonna be the best thing for me to do. And someone actually said to me in a message, I think earlier today, they were like, it's often the little questions, just like, how are you that really, really get you? And yeah, it just got me, but I, I really appreciate, yeah, I really appreciate your comments. I really appreciate some of the messages I've got. Some of you have shared really personal stuff with me about things that you've gone through and, I really, yeah, I just feel very grateful and very supported and 
yeah, I just wanted to say thank you because it really does mean a lot. Right, okay, so there she is. I think that's going to be fine. I think she's going to do okay. I will check in with her soon and I will let you know if there's any updates, but fingers crossed that's going to that's gonna help spark some new growth in her. I'm just a little bit concerned about that root system. As I say, like I did think it was going to be bigger. Um, and I do also think when the hydrogen peroxide arrives, I will give her a water through with that as well, just to be on the safe side. Ah, the little bulb. So this does actually, it's very, very small, but it does have a new growth point on the stem. I know that leaf died off, but I think I'm not going to chop it all the way back because I do think it's probably, probably, hopefully going to push out some new growth. So yeah, I'm just going to pop this one in this teeny tiny little pot. there we go look at how adorable that is it's just like a little shoot in a pot so i think i'm going to put both of these back into my cabinet just because as i say it's got really good humidity really good light all the good things that hopefully these ones need to kind of kick back into action and and yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go wash my hands so I also just thought I'd give you an update on the Anthurium forgetii seeds, which I planted a little while ago now, and I, I, I can't see any movement in the same way that I could on the Clarinervium seeds. So, mm, yeah, okay. So I might have to put a close-up. In fact, I'll put a close-up in because I feel like you're not going to be able to see that. They're looking a bit yellow. They're looking a bit yellow, and that's not a good sign. Um, I'm actually just taking one out here and, okay, this one's got a very little root, very, very little, and it looks like it might have the start of a sprout, but I almost feel like I'd do better putting these into soil. I've just put my potting mat away, but what I might do is I might just transfer some of these, maybe just half of them, because there's six in there at the moment, half of them into soil and see how they do. I mean, that I think could potentially get a little bit more movement going on them than is at the moment so we'll give it a go we'll give it a go as I say if they're more or less dormant as it is then it's not going to do any harm and I think probably to be honest part of the reason why they are yellowing is just because of the heat in here I think I probably need to find another spot for them because it's been so hot and like with propagation boxes whenever you cover something with cling film it really kind of intensifies the heat because it's basically like a little greenhouse so yeah, I think ideally they shouldn't really go above about 25, 26 degrees. And it's been mid thirties in the last few days. So that is, that is not good. Right, I'm just gonna use a pencil to stick some little holes in there. And then let's hope they take. Again, I'll probably pop these ones into my cabinet because I just had so much success doing it that way with my Clarinervium seeds that I feel like that's probably gonna be the best option, but I'll, I'll do an update on these in maybe a few weeks and we'll see how they're getting on. Ah, oh, there is one here that's actually looking lovely and green, although it barely has a root. There. Oh, can you see? There we go, give it some shelter. Yeah, that one's looking quite green, but I mean, honestly, it's got like a millimetre worth of root and I don't think I'm going to risk putting that in soil yet because I don't think it will do well. So I'm going to leave that one in there and then maybe just grab one more. Okay, so I don't really know if you'll be able to tell. They're the little the little yellow dots on the soil, but hopefully they will do something now. But what I wanted to do as well, I just want to collect some my so my Anthurium clarinervium just here, my big one has currently got an inflorescence that is absolutely huge. And I did actually pollinate this one um, a couple of days ago, and obviously it's gone to the male stage at the moment where it's now producing pollen, which they can do if they have been successfully pollinated. So I don't know yet whether or not it's worked, but I have also got some other inflorescences coming up on my other anthuriums, and I'm really tempted to pollinate them. But this one, as you can see, she's so big, so well established, and I feel like she's got the best energy reserves to pollinate. So I've got another one. Oh, there we go. Just there coming up. So I'm thinking if I collect some more pollen from this one, then hopefully I can pollinate this plant and get some more anthurium seeds. But to collect the pollen, I usually just use a bit of tin foil and I'll fold it in half. And I have been collecting pollen in here already. So there's a little bit in there already, which is like dust. So I highly doubt you'll be able to see on camera can you see but yeah what I'll do is I'll just hold the 
in fluorescence kind of really, really as far in as I possibly can, because as I say, the pollen is so fine. And then I just use a little clean makeup brush and I'll just brush it, I can't really see, but I'll just brush it into the foil. And sometimes it's literally like microscopic, like you can hardly see it at all, but it is there. Like the good thing is when I've done it before and I've kind of looked at the foil afterwards and thought I can't see a single thing, then when I take my brush and I go back into it to collect it, to pollinate, then I'm like, ah, there's loads on the brush. So yeah, this is just how I like to do it. I know some people do literally just like rub them with their fingers or something. This is how I like to do it. This is how I've always had the highest success rate. So it is what I'm doing. Yeah, so I've got enough I'd say I've got enough there to probably pollinate a few times. So I'm hoping I'll get lots more of these over the summer and I'll be able to have some lovely berries soon. But yeah, those are kind of the main things that I wanted to do, which I realise hasn't taken very long at all. So maybe I will take you around. In fact, I will, because I feel like my last video I didn't. I said I was going to give you some like positive updates and I never did. So maybe I will take you around and show you show you some of my favourite plants at the moment, show you what they're doing. Let me think on that while I make a cup of tea and then I will give you some more positive, interesting updates. So it's turned into quite a lot later. I went to make a cup of tea, realised I was hungry, ended up making a pizza and then thought about which plants I wanted to take you around and show you and thought that if I started doing that, I'd probably show you most of them. I'd probably get distracted and end up showing you all of them. So I, I only say that I won't do that because I want to do a full house plant tour at some point soon. But I have selected a few that I think, if I had to say, are probably bringing me the most joy at the moment. So the first one, I've got a couple in here that are fairly new additions, but the first one is one that I got uh, from Hutch recently when I went to Torquay. It is a fir, no, it's not a philodendron. It's a Peperomia sarcophylla, I think it is. Um, and yeah, I know I showed you this one recently, but I just am absolutely in love with it. Its leaves are just almost like anthurium veiny, which I just absolutely love. It's so gorgeous. It doesn't have a lot of growth on this side. So when I've made its pot, I've kind of made the ugly side of the pot that side. So the rest looks pretty, but yeah, I just absolutely adore it. And I've just never seen a peperomia like this before and it blows my mind. I can't stop staring at it. So yeah, that's that one. And then the second one is one that I've had for a while, but I feel like I don't give enough credit to. Like it's such a low maintenance plant. It's a Syngonium batik, I think it is. And I just love it, but it's always just kind of there. And I think because it doesn't require a huge amount of care, I don't really give it enough credit. So yeah, I just think it's beautiful. I think its leaves are stunning. It's got some beautiful new leaves. These last few weeks, it's just really started popping out some gorgeous growth and it's got new growth points down here as well. So yeah, this is one that I definitely need to take the time to admire more. And then the next one is another relatively new addition, but this is one that was a wishlist plant for as long as I can even remember. This is my variegated Adansonii, Indonesian variegated Adansonii, and it's just amazing. This plant is, I just feel so honestly so lucky to own this plant because I never thought I'd be able to get one because I don't know, they're expensive and they're really hard to come by. And yeah, I, I love it so, so, so much. And also in the time that I've had it, it's already given me that leaf and it's got a new one on the way. So it's being incredibly quick considering like, I don't know, it's actually been quicker than my normal regular Adansonii, which is really surprising. It has been in my cabinet, which as I've said before, does help to kind of speed things up, but it's just beautiful. I am totally, totally in love with it. And then the next one is one that I've actually never shown on my YouTube channel before. And if you're on my Patreon, you will have seen it because I did a video on plants that I've never shown on YouTube. But it doesn't look the prettiest, but it's a variegated monstera. And this is, this is one of my mother plants. This is a plant that I basically continuously grow and then chop. And I have got so many babies off this plant in the past. I've swapped them, I've sold them, and I chopped her back recently. And this new leaf at the bottom that's just come in, how beautiful is that? And there's another one coming there as well already. And that's a completely new growth point. And then up here, I chopped her, I've chopped her a couple of times up here now actually, but I've got as the first leaf, a really beautiful kind of just off half moon leaf, which I just think is so gorgeous. And then you can see at the back there, there's loads of new growth points. And the thing that I've really found as well with having this as just kind of mother plant, each time I chop it, it really helps the auxiliary buds to push out more growth. So although 
as I say, although she doesn't look great and she definitely, definitely needs a moss pole, I am just really happy with how she grows. And I think she's obviously got very good genetics. Like, although some of the lower leaves originally weren't that highly variegated, the ones at the top, I mean, look at that balance of white on the stem. Yeah, just there. I think she's gonna produce some really, really beautiful variegations. So yeah, I just, I keep this one growing all the time. I will never completely chop her up, or if I do, I'll then let her grow back before I chop her up again. But she's great. I've had her for, I've had her for a couple of years now and she just, she just keeps going. And then no surprise at all, the next one that's bringing me so much joy at the moment is my Hoya Sarawak. It is just, it's just an incredible plant and I still can't get over just how big it is. And yeah, it's just, it's amazing. And it blows my mind every single time I look at this plant. I'm just like, how, how is something that beautiful real? Like it looks like it's been sculpted. It doesn't even look like a real plant. It's just crazy. But as you can see, I have potted her up now. She had a really lovely root system and I'm really hoping that she's gonna produce some lovely growth at some point. Anyone that has a Sarawak, what like out of interest, what are their, growth rates like? Are they quick? Are they slow? I kind of get the feeling this one's going to be quite slow, especially because the leaves she's got are so big. I feel like to continue that level of growth, she would need a lot of energy. But yeah, I'd be very interested to know if anyone has this plant already. But yeah, that is her. I, I adore her. And yeah, again, another one I feel so lucky to have. I feel so lucky to have all of them, but this one is just, she's so special. I love her. And then I know there are two in this pot, but the one the one that we're focusing is the one on the right, the Philodendron Sodoroy Aff, which is kind of, as you know, I've posted it up with my Gloriosum, which I will try and get out of the way, but it is just giving me the most incredible growth. And it's so, so, so fast. Like when I first got this plant, I think I only had two or three leaves. And firstly, each leaf, you can kind of see, there we go. Each leaf is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And she's got that beautiful new one coming there as well. And I just think she's stunning. I just love her two bits. And to be honest, the rate that she's growing at, I think what I'm probably gonna have to do, because my Philodendron Gloriosum here on the left, the one that's got that weird yellowy leaf that I still don't know why that's happening. The one here on the left, I think at some point I might have to take my Gloriosum out and just make this plant specifically for my Sodoroy Aff because yeah, if she's growing this quickly now, she's gonna push the other plant out of the pot fairly quickly. But I mean, I kind of don't mind that. I'd quite like her to fill the whole plant if she possibly can. But yeah, so I, I'm loving that one right now. She's bringing me so much happiness. And then this next one I actually spoke about in my Patreon video earlier. It's my Croniana Super Silver because the last time I spoke about this plant, I said that I thought it was going to be quite slow growing. And a lot of you were saying otherwise. And I was kind of like, mm, really? I kind of think it's going to be quite slow. And you guys were right. Look how bushy it's got. Literally in the last couple of weeks, it's I mean, it's getting really, really big now and I'm so happy. I'm so, so, so pleased it's such a fast grower because it's it's so beautiful. And at some point I would love to propagate this plant and get lots of them going because I just love those splashes of blue and silver plant everywhere. I just, I think it looks so pretty. So yeah, I'm, I'm just loving this one right now. And actually, and I won't show you because I was really, really selective over the plants that I brought to the table to show you now. My other Croniana that's actually much, much smaller than this one, it's only got two vines, is actually trying to flower, which I'm just like, really? Some of my really mature Hoyas haven't even done that yet. So I'm wondering if I'm gonna get any blooms off this one. I would be so happy if I did, but there's no sign of it yet. But yeah, I am just loving her so, so, so much at the moment. And then lastly, an all-time favourite, my white princess philodendron, who doesn't really fit in shot anymore. But if you look at her new half moon leaf just there, that is that is the most beautiful leaf I think that she's given me. I haven't had in like all of my all of my time owning plants, I haven't had that many plants that have given me half moon leaves. And now I've got it on my variegated monstera, and I've also got it on this one. So yeah. And also I like I have seen white princesses produce pink before and I know it's quite unusual, but the stem of the half moon leaf actually looks really, really pinky. And I don't know if that's a sign that maybe there's good things to come, but if if she was to give me some pink, oh my goodness, I don't know what, I don't know what I'd do with myself. I would be so, so, so happy. But yeah, I just adore this plant so much. She's one that I've had for, I've had for well over a year now, but every single time I see her, I'm always just like, oh, I love you so much. So yes, she will, I feel like she will always be on my list. I check on her pretty much every single day when I wake up in the morning and I come in here, have my coffee, look at my plants, do some watering. I always go straight to this one and I always just see what she's up to. 
So yes, those are, I could go on and on and on. If you wanna see more, whoa, let's not break the plants on your way down. If you want to see more favorite plants or more plants that I'm really loving at the moment, they change quite a lot, to be honest. There's some that I feel like are kind of constants and others that I will be so in love with and then another one will kind of take the limelight. But if any of you want to see more planty things that I'm loving, then let me know in the comments. I will absolutely show you more. As you probably know by now, I could waffle on about my plants all day. So yeah, let me know. But I really, really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit random and disjointed, but if you did enjoy it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.